program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Prime Minister Marapa's leadership challenged. Kumul Petroleum commences first shipment. And CCDA presents first transparency report. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Malcolm Waira. Thank you for joining us. The new state-of-the-art Melanesia House at the Waigani Precinct was officially inaugurated by Prime Minister James Marape on Monday, the 15th of April, 2024. This will now serve as the seat of Papua New Guinea's executive government. That day marked a special day for the first time of the PNG government, the National Executive Council. The Melanesian House will accommodate the Office of the Prime Minister and the Department of Prime Minister and National Executive Council. This is the new state-of-the-art building, which faces the new courthouse and the Parliament House. A dedication service and opening ceremony graced the area as distinguished guests including various ministers of government, Chief Secretary to Government Ivan Pomaleo, National Executive Council Secretary Grace Soon, and several church pastors. Prime Minister Murape during the opening highlighted the strategic placement of the building. The Prime Minister and National Executive Council, uh, the Department of Prime Minister and National Executive Council rather, is the head of our National Public Service. The Executive Government functions well and proper if the Prime Minister's Department and is structuring well and proper. And so it's important that they are seated properly and more so as the two arms of government work together side by side. Symbolically, this precinct is right adjacent to where the judiciary and our legislature is seated. If you look at the Wagani seat of government, the relocation of Prime Minister and NEC into this Melanesian house is not accidental, but it is designed where the two arms of government stand together side by side. NEC Secretary Soon emphasized the importance of having credibility in the roles and functions of the Department of Prime Minister and NEC and the Office of the Prime Minister. We can get news from the occupants of the building, their roles and responsibilities, and their the clients that this is not just a building. It is a reflection of the aspirations and dreams of Papua New Guineans. It is an important link connecting visions and plans with reality. Policies with implementation, willpower with action power, and determination with success. Furthermore, this occasion marks an important step towards the long plan of the government for the design and construction services for the seat of government office precincts and realizes the mission of the Prime Minister to have the three arms of government in close proximity to each other. Prime Minister Marape emphasized that as the country moves into its 50th anniversary in 2025, the three arms of government must operate and be centralized in the Waigani area for ease of coordination and effective work. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Shadow Minister for Mining and Environment, Conservation and Climate Change, James Donald, released a statement today saying that Prime Minister James Marape's illogical and absurd decisions continue to plague the country. He released this statement following the news to relocate the Prime Minister's office to a privately owned building. Said Papua New Guineans are sick and tired of reading about PM Marape's illogical decisions every day, with the latest one being the relocation of the Department of Prime Minister and National Executive Council to a new building called Melanesian House. In a statement, James Donald said since the 80s, the Seamana Super House, formerly known as Maria House and fondly known as the Pineapple Building, has been the office of the Prime Minister. 
Mr. Donald indicated that the decision to move to a new office does not make any economic sense and raises questions about sovereignty, security and collusion between cronies. The shadow minister clarified that the Sermana Super House is owned by the country. Therefore, we don't need to pay rent to anyone. He said the office of the prime minister of the independent state of PNG will have to pay rent and operate under another man's roof. He further stated that the country's leader should be working, hosting meetings with world leaders, making confidential decisions and governing from inside a building owned by the government. Mr. Donald also highlighted that instead of using scarce public funds to upgrade and maintain this uh, Mana Super House, Pierre Marape preferred to spend these monies to rent a building from a private developer and therefore the people of Papua New Guinea will have to pay hundreds of millions of kinas in rent to the private developer. Louis Maingu, National MTV News. Deputy opposition leader and member for Chuave and shadow treasurer James Nomane gives a glimpse into the upcoming public debates on Papua New Guinea's economy, which is set for the 2nd of May 2024 at the APEC House in Port Moresby. In an exclusive interview with the shadow treasurer, he has revealed that the economic status of the country is vital for public scrutiny transparency and awareness. In relation to the current treasurer, who happens to be the Prime Minister, the Honourable James Marape, and his assistant uh, treasurer, um, the Honourable Ian Lingstaki, basically the impetus for the public debate is to have uh, the treasurer um, in the government to come out and uh, in a setting with a moderator and an expert panel to tell the country what policies they've been applying since 2019 that has created the socio-economic conditions that we currently are experiencing. Mr. Nomane further elaborated. And not just scrutiny of the average Papua New Guinean, but experts, industry experts, elites, educated individuals, who can come and effectively scrutinize and provide constructive criticism about the application of economic policy and whether it's worked or it hasn't worked. With respect to the current conditions that we are experiencing in the economy, the lack of jobs, the high inflation, the lack of forex, it's high time that the government comes to public debate to advise the country on whether they will change what they've been doing because it hasn't been working or whether they will continue uh, with the policies that have brought us um, to this crossroad. The issue of inflation and kina devaluation being the common factors of the economic state of the country. Nomane gave his statement on this. The, the government is focused on fiscal policy that, and that, that, in, that uh, involves two main things. How they regulate taxes, whether to increase or decrease taxes or how much money the government spends. The monetary policy is controlled by the central bank and they regulate the interest rates and they regulate the money supply in the economy. So we anticipate and expect that a treasurer should respect the independence of the central bank and allow them to effectively manage inflation within the country. Grace Papiali, National MTV News. Teachers around the country are expected to be at the forefront in conducting the 2024 National Population Census that is set to take place in June this year. This was stated by the national statistician, John Igitoy, during the opening of the Southern Region Census Workshop. This population census that will be held from the 17th to the 30th of June will be the fifth national population census for the country where teachers have been the ones to deliver the census. Teachers have been there uh, in the communities, uh, elementary school teachers, primary school teachers, high school teachers, 
they have been always there. The Prime Minister, during the launch of the 2024 census, gave instructions to the Department of Personal Management to issue a circular for all public servants around the country to take responsibility and help deliver the census. Igitoi said since teachers are already in most communities all throughout the country, they with the help of public servants in each provincial administration. This mechanism is just in order. We've got the, we've got the, uh, the government mechanism already in order. Uh, what we need to do is just do a formalized letter, circulars, and instructing them that uh, we're going to be part of this operation. So. The National Statistics Office is currently running a census workshop for the Southern Region for provincial census coordinators, provincial finance managers and human resource managers to help prepare them for the census, including the recruitment public servants and non-public servants. The human resource we brought on board to assist us, assist us in this recruitment exercise. Uh, it's a massive exercise as well. Uh, we're trying to uh, recruit at the local level, uh, at the LLGs, at the wards, at the, at the communities. So that's why we're trying to bring in those people. And the workshop began yesterday and will end on Friday, while similar workshops will be carried out for the other three regions in the coming weeks. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start school grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money belum 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them green rice. Cut them round in big blue roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name, none of us long you long backside long app. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XC 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kira. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him more talk savvy. Thanks to conditions is tough. Remember the joy of playing with your toys as a child? At Money Plus, we believe that every small business deserves a chance to build and grow. That's why we offer asset financing. Now chance to building something new To see a different point of view Nipla Halivim Wari belong you. National Population Census Ibai Kamapo June 2024 and National Statistic Office Iwo Kong Paini Mokut Naman Meri Pusat Ibai Meki Wok Long Isim Data Inside Long 1 1 Board Na LLG Belong All You in Long Apply Suppose Christmas Belong You is Tap Namel Long 18 Na 45 Years You Must Finish in Grade 10 School or Antap You Must Fit Na Healthy Na Nogat Heavy Long I Na You Must Again Talk To Good Na Clear Long I Belong All Man Meri You Must Igat Experience Long Kissing Data or Survey Before You Must Igat One Pillar Bank Account Na You Must Igat Survey Long Using Mokai Machine on same Android phone or tablet too. Suppose you think on same you in up long making work long census 2024, you can go kiss him application form on provincial NSO office close to you, or you can download him long www.nso.gov.pg. Pull him up in this form, now Sunny Montem CV belong you, Eagle Long Provincial Census Coordinator or Provincial Recruitment Coordinator, long NSO office is that close to you. Closing date, he by long number 19 day belong moon April 2024. This bill talk survey, he kiss him to go right, he come long office belong national statistician. 
people have different views about this situation that we are currently going on. From the IEEC's perspective, these are challenges brought into the, our economy by what has been happening globally. You would have known that the, the value of the Kina has been sliding since last year. So this is one of the key determinants that also affects import cost of businesses in the country. So what we do is we try to make sure that the prices that business houses charges are not over and above or unnecessarily ripping off our consumers. That's on Monday night. You're watching National MTV News. Climate Change and Development Authority held an inception workshop today in Port Mosby for the preparation of the first biennial transparency report, which will be submitted to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat by the end of this year. Under the Paris Agreement, Biennial Transparency Report is a national report that developed and developing countries are requested to submit to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat every two years. Presenting on the work plan for preparation of Biennial Transparency Report at the workshop today was Jason Paniu, who gave a brief insight on the Biennial Transparency Report. Um, so the Biennial Transparency Report is basically to track the progress of Papua New Guinea. So we have all these policies in place and all these actions in place or interventions to address the issues of climate change. Uh, the Biennial Transparency Report basically um, provides an update on how much we've actually implemented or what, how much we've actually done so far in terms of addressing the issues of climate change. The workshop was supported at a technical level by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations under the Global Environment Facilities Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency 2 project. It was also supported at a logistical level by Expertise France with funding from the European Union through the national component of the European Union funded Forestry Climate Change Biodiversity Program for Papua New Guinea implemented by Expertise France. Louis Mangu, National MTV News. The historic Kondom Anguando Provincial Chamber for Simbu Province yesterday received 10 million kina through Prime Minister James Marape for refurbishment and upgrade. Prime Minister James Marape, when acknowledging some of the prominent leaders in the likes of Se Yambaki Okuk, Se Kobale Kale, and Se Kondom Augando, who was the first Central Highlands MP that contributed to nation building, and it was only fair to support such an iconic building. Simple provincial member Noah Kool thank the Prime Minister for the 10 million kina that will give a facelift to the iconic Kondom Algondo building. Tamara Agavi, National MTV News. The Sri Lankan community in Papua New Guinea celebrated the Sri Lankan New Year at the Institute of Business Studies University premises recently. Sri Lankans in PNG and around the world celebrate this event every year on the 14th of April. The celebration commenced with lighting of the traditional oil lamp by guest of honor, CEO for Nest Fund Rajiv Sharma, and witnessed by other dignitaries. The singing of both Sri Lanka and PNG national anthems followed after. Mr. Rajiv Sharma highlighted that New Year celebrations in India and Sri Lanka have similarities as both countries have similar cultural backgrounds. He emphasized the importance of identity when living overseas, stating that people cannot forget their culture, language and religion and must pass these values to their children. Honorary Consul for Sri Lanka in Papua New Guinea, also President of Sri Lanka Papua New Guinea Friendship Foundation, Mr. Pandita Bandara, shared more on the Sri Lankan New Year and its importance in the country's traditions and beliefs. According to research, Sri Lanka New Year coincides with the end of main agricultural harvests, particularly the paddy harvests. 
In ancient times, this festival was to respect and worship the sun god for providing good weather and good harvest. The sun has been the base on which time and seasons were counted upon. Sun worship was practiced in ancient Sri Lanka, and this legacy still continues as part of the country's New Year celebrations. The celebrations in Port Moresby ended with traditional performances by children, games and traditional Sri Lankan food. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Over 150 doctors, nurses and other medical personnel from America were welcomed at the Togoba, Togoba Rural Hospital in Western Highlands Province yesterday. The medical team is currently in the country to participate in the mega health clinic organized by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in PNG. This is a lead up to the church's nationwide two week two weeks evangelistic campaign themed PNG for Christ 2024. Up to 2,000 sites around the country are being prepared to host the PNG for Christ 2024 programs, and more than 300 international evangelists from America and Australia will join local pastors and preachers during sermons and preaching. President of the General Conference, the governing organization of the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church, Theodore N.C. Wilson, will be attending this evangelistic campaign. The program will commence on the 28th April and conclude on 12th of May. A week-long medical outreach funded by the Hohola Seventh-day Adventist Church has attracted hundreds of Hohola residents to seek health services. The outreach enabled residents from all age groups receiving treatment and accessing medical services ranging from body max index to blood pressure check, among others. Patients also went through counseling conducted by the church youths through sharing the word and love of Jesus. Rachel Nanga, the medical outreach team leader, will share with us the purpose this outreach serves. Lo tok save lo community na all get the line inche lo NCDC this la program have been and by come up lo 2024 lo day 24 April na go finish lo 12 of May tok save osem this la program have been come up so that all get the line again. Look, Savelo Jesus. Hohola resident Terry Gigimai commended the Hohola SDA Church for this vital service. The community service where plenty of man Mary Sapanim had to go along all existing hospitals because it's often crowded and uh, uh, cost factor and uh, bus or you know transport transport now got to displace and make him uh, uh, all man Sapanim had to access some kind of services but. Uh, me appreciate him, um, whole SDA church, look, I'm put him open, open uh, free service system where all people can access him. The medical outreach commenced on Sunday, the 14th of this month, and will end tomorrow. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. Now we take a look at the Nest Fund Market Report. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.2644 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2569 US dollars, 0.3961 Australian dollars, 0.2343 Euro, 39.31 Japanese yen. And looking at the commodity prices at New York closed, gold is trading higher, coffee closed higher, cocoa closed higher, copra closed higher, Palm oil closed lower, crude oil is trading lower, copper closed unchanged. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX 200 is trading lower, the All Ordinaries is trading lower. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck. Like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too. Like working hard and keeping my super with NAS fun. They looked after it for me. Which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Hamamas One Time Telecom's Gupla Mobile Data Plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours. Or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 kina. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bulabif Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC Policy Decision Number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit-for-purpose human human capital and institutional development in the National Public Service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments on the 19th April 2024. So Mare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders. Drink. Feel the power. Experience a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits, or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSP, our bank, our people. Welcome to the Eat Smart campaign with Chef Jules Henao, where we meet the true heroes, the sons and the daughters of our soil, our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Henao will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. This is the Eat Smart campaign. 8:30 p.m. Sunday, right here on the number one to watch MTV. Top up now with Telecom's Good Plus More bundles. Subscribe to any of Telecom's More bundle plans, ranging from three kina to seventy-five kina, to enjoy unlimited on-net calls, more SMS, more data with increased off-net minutes. Choose from eight exclusive plans, packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. You're watching National MTV News. State-owned oil and gas company Kumul Petroleum Holdings today saw the loading of its first LNG cargo for the international LNG markets. The event was witnessed by KPHL Managing Director Wapu Song and other dignitaries at the PNG LNG plant site outside of Port Moresby. Accompanying the Deputy Prime Minister was the Minister for State-Owned Enterprises, William Duma, Petroleum Minister Jimmy Maladina, along with the KPHL's Managing Director, Wapu Song. Kumu Petroleum is, is going through a phased change in, in our existence from 2010 to now 2024, 14 years of the company being established. The, the, the government of Papua New Guinea never really had a long-term vision as to 
as to what the policy should be in, in participating in our extractive industry. Song said many state-owned oil and gas companies have been formed in the past without proper long-term plans until KPHL's establishment. What I wanted to do is thank ExxonMobil for providing the leadership within the JV to uh, allow the JV partners to market the excess volume ourselves. Right? The 6.6 .6 million ton panel has been, has been uh, marketed and sold on a long-term basis. KPHL's net assets is worth over $3 billion and thanked ExxonMobil as the operator of the PNG LNG for allowing KPHL to sell its shares of excess volume LNG to the market. Also present were the delegates from PetroChina, the company that is buying the KPHL's first LNG shipment. Guys in the delegation, four of them is the first time. Uh, very impressive. Uh, yesterday when we landed here, I said, oh, this is so beautiful country here. <laughs> Sorry, we, we came here late. Second impression is, it's very impressive for the first sight of all the operations here. I uh, appreciate all the effort, contribution uh, by the group of Exxon. Uh, Exxon is also our... Managing Director Li Shaolin and his team flew in from China to witness the loading of the LNG cargo. Both Rosso and Minister Duma thanked ExxonMobil for its continued support in the joint venture and guiding KPHL over the years. Following the loading of KP Hachel's first LNG cargo at the PNG LNG plant site today, the state-owned oil and gas company is expected to sign an agreement with PetroChina later this evening. 20 youths from the Koki Seven-Day Adventist Church in Mosby South were awarded basic first aid training certificates after undergoing a day of training. The training was held in partnership with Sebrine Bell Center for Transfusion Medicine, Sebrine Bell Foundation, Pomgen, and St. John. The one-day training held on the 7th to the 8th of November 2023 covered topics ranging from infection control, St. John Action Plan, Doctors ABC, and CPR. <laughs> St. John Manager for Community Program Zoe Saleb elaborates on the importance of first aid training. It's, it's very important that everyone in the community are trained first aid. Uh, we've started um, with the support of Sabrina Bell Foundation. We're able to run the first aid in schools program since 2018. So that's teaching um, uh, young people about first aid and the importance of it and when you should apply first aid and how, um, what the benefits are in terms of um, applying those skills to save a life. Um, before getting help or before um, transporting that person to a hospital or before we St. John Ambulance arrive at scene to be able to help that person who is very sick or very injured. Towards the end of the training, a blood donation drive was also conducted where 59 out of the 120 youths donated blood. Operations manager for SBBCT, Zinaya Penny, thanked the youth stating the blood donated means life for someone else and could save up to three lives. St. John Deputy Commissioner Ambulance Services, Rigona Rita, who represented the Koki Youths, expressed gratitude to all partners involved in conducting this program. On behalf of the entire community, I want to express my gratitude for your service and my admiration for your dedication. You are a shining example of what it means to live out the values of compassion, kindness, and service to others. Gladys Killer, National MTV News. The Markham Pottery Festival was launched recently at Mujing Station in Morobe Province. The show is set to take place a few days prior to the Morobe Provincial Agricultural Show. In Papua New Guinea, the pottery and clay pot holds significant cultural and culinary importance. 
known for its traditional craftsmanship and natural materials, the PNG clay pot is revered for its ability to enhance the flavors of indigenous dishes. During the launching of the NCC, during the launching, the NCC executive director Stephen Kilanda urged the people of Makam to showcase their pottery and clay pots to show the world because it is their culture. Moving to overseas news, Solomon Island citizens will go to the polls today to vote for their elected leaders in the country's national general elections today. As you can see right behind me, I'm here in my home province, Northeast Malaita, which is a five hour boat from Honiara, which is Solomon Island's capital, to get this far to be able to vote. And today being a special day, uh, it's election day, not only for many Solomon Islanders, but we have others outside of Solomon Island who are closely watching this election. Right just on my left, that will be my polling uh, station. I'll give you a little tour before I, I continue, but that, that's where I'll be voting today. Like me and many others, not only here, but across Solomon Islands, we have to go by boat or it's either a walk passing uh, rivers and and to get to the different polling stations across Solomon Islands itself to, to vote for the candidate of our choice. And, you know, given the remoteness, uh, I've had to also bring a satellite dish all the way from Honiara to here to be able to connect to you. And um, like I said, I'll be going to the polling station there. And as you can imagine, I'll leave the satellite dish behind here and uh, just probably go on one of these dugout canoes and cast my vote. In Solomon Islands itself, um, we, we don't have polling. Uh, there's, it's hard to predict who will win with no polling available here. And it's quite different to Australia, given that the political parties that we have are not well established. But Sogobare himself, he's led a government that has been stable over the past five years. He's overcome the pandemic. Um, and then the Pacific Games was one of the centerpiece of his, from his government. And no doubt he will uh, be one of the favorites. But in terms of challenging him, there's Peter Kenny Lore Jr., who is the son of the first prime minister of Solomon Islands, Peter Kenny Lore Sr., as well as one of his uh, opposition critics, uh, Matthew Wale. So all these names uh, will be you know, up against Stogavare, but most importantly, they will all have to follow the first process, which is they need to be elected in their own electorates or their constituencies before we can talk about who the next Prime Minister for Solomon Islands will be. But there are other different issues that many Solomon Islanders are facing, and this, these issues would be the election issues that many Solomon Islanders will vote for today. At the very least, is geopolitics, but we do know that uh, today's elections, we will have eagle's eye um, on Solomon Islands. There has been a slump in tourists heading to Australia for a holiday with figures dropping since 2019. There's been a really steep drop in the number of international tourists taking a holiday in Australia, with the figure dropping by 30% compared to 2019. Last year, about 6.1 million people came to visit Australia, but it's around 2 million short of pre-pandemic levels. Now, Victoria saw the biggest loss in international travel at 33%, followed by Queensland at 24%, and then New South Wales at 22%. Experts say that international National recovery has been frustratingly held back by a lack of capacity on key overseas routes, expensive airfares and the rising cost of hotels and restaurants. They also say that China's ongoing economic problems, the war in Ukraine and the US elections are all also having an impact. Chinese visitor numbers to Australia, which made up the bulk of visitors before the pandemic, slumped to around 500,000 last year, which is less than half of what it was before international borders closed. So economists are predicting that it might not be until next year or even 2026 that Australia sees a return to its pre-pandemic tourism levels and experts are now calling for governments to subsidise travel to Australia to encourage those visitors to return. Israel is still restricting aid for the citizens of Gaza according to a United Nations report. In Gaza, the threat of all-out war in the Middle East has little power to frighten. War there has already left many with little to lose. In the southern border town of Rafah, now a vast refugee camp, the Hamdan and Shabak families buried five people today. 
killed in Israeli airstrikes overnight, Gaza's health ministry said. I lost my feelings. I don't have feelings anymore. I'm going crazy. They should put me with him. The beach road leading north to Gaza City was packed today with crowds and rumors. People hoping to return to their homes in the north, but turned back again and again by the army. Today, the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, told new army recruits that operations in Gaza were just one part of a wider war. It's part of a bigger system. You can see it. Iran stands behind Hamas, behind Hezbollah, behind others. But we are determined to win there and defend ourselves in all arenas. New footage released by the army shows the moment the military focus here changed. The first interceptions of Iranian missiles ordered from this control room. Israel's ongoing conflicts with Iranian-backed groups have been pushed into the shadows by a direct attack from Tehran. How Israel responds could take the world down a much more dangerous path. And international allies, the UK among them, have been lining up, urging Benjamin Netanyahu to show restraint. Knowledgeable. Now but Israel's a... former national security adviser says the Iranian strike leaves Israel with an opportunity to take on the groups it should have confronted before. We didn't wage a war against Hezbollah two years ago. Huge mistake. When you see the evil growing, becoming stronger, you have to do something. Should we wait? I think it will be a huge mistake to wait with Hezbollah, with Hamas and with the Iranians. We have to annihilate this threat to Israel, but it's not just Israel. The West is next. Israel is already treading a tightrope in its conflict with Hezbollah. This an airstrike on a senior Hezbollah commander today, the army said. The Gaza war has already inflamed Israel's regional conflicts. Its next decision could push them into all-out war. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. At Able Home in Office, you can find a wide range of tech products, including computers, printers, and accessories for home and business use. We also offer stationery and office supplies to equip your productive workspaces. Additionally, our selection of small home appliances provides convenience for both home and office. To manage offices efficiently, we provide business software solutions for accounting, payroll, HR management, and other programs. With physical stores across the NG, Able is the leading workspace supplier. For more details, contact us today. At IPI Catering, we understand the intricacies of the environments in which we work. Providing innovative, fresh, and creative catering solutions our experience and commitment is a winning combination. Delivering great food anywhere and anytime. IPI Catering, part of the IPI group of companies. You sabi o semote number one super, you can seke super account by you lo phone na internet. Kisi balance belong you long SMS hurry up through. Look in transaction history, housing advance eligibility, Beneficiary listing, na downloading statement belong you once an NSL mobile app or member portal. Suppose you can run ask him, you can ring him or sell him email go to call center blow me plan. You don't need the sign up online. Join him plan till Arab and number one super members who decide to use him service online. Visit him number one super website that day. Say hello to the new basic corn beef. Freshly taste to add to your cooking menu. Just look at it. Yummy! It's affordable and now available in shops near you. 
Try our new best corn beef now. It's better, it's best. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money belum 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with grain rice. Cut them round in big blue roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, none of us long get long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XM 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kiss in more talk savvy. Tabs the conditions is start. Welcome to the Eat Smart campaign with Chef Jules Henao, where we meet the true heroes, the sons and the daughters of our soil, our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Henao will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. This is the Eat Smart campaign. 8.30 p.m. Sunday, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. Two Kai Sports. Welcome to True Kai Sports. Theodis Limited renewed its 50,000 Kenya annual sponsorship with Papua New Guinea Olympic Committee in Port Moresby today. As Team PNG embarks on its journey to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, TODIS Limited Corporate Development Manager Ryan Penny told Trukai Sports today that the sponsorship serves as a way of investing in the athletes' potential to achieve greatness and inspire future generations across Papua New Guinea. The PNG Olympic Committee plays a pivotal role in nurturing the potential of our nation's top athletes. They provide the essentials uh, in resources, training and opportunities that enable our athletes to compete and excel in the world stage. Pini further stated that sports have the power to shape lives, fostering invaluable qualities like perseverance, teamwork and the unwavering pursuit of goals. The pathway to the Olympics is paved with dedication and sacrifice. This sponsorship is our place to ensure our athletes have the opportunity they need to overcome challenges they reach in their ultimate dreams. I want to extend our deepest gratitude to the coaches, the families, mentors, and the entire PNG Olympic Committee. Your tireless efforts are the foundation of Papua New Guinea's sporting ambitions. When our athletes wear the colors of Papua New Guinea, they represent the collective strength, resilience, and aspirations of our entire nation. Acknowledging the long-term partnership, PNG Olympic Committee Secretary General Desmond Kaviagu said, PNG OC is looking forward to support athletes who will represent PNG in the 2024 Paris Olympic Games. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the athletes and sports um, behind us on the road to Paris 2024. So we have eight sports that we're targeting on the road to Paris. And we're fortunate enough to have some athletes that have already qualified for Team PNG with the final qualifications ending on June 30th. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And thank you very much to Theodis for continuing to support Team PNG. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Renowned Australian broadcaster and former Olympic boxer Benny Pike has shown interest in attending the Kokoda Boxing Challenge 2024 this month between PNG and the Australian states of New South Wales and Victoria. Benny, who was the lead commentator for the boxing competition of the Pacific Games last year in Honiara, Solomon Islands, has expressed his interest in a social media exchange with PNG boxing coach Peter Morrison to support the Kokoda Challenge on the 28th of this month. PNG Boxing Union Secretary General Martin Leary said that information was shared with the executives who are now calling on corporate organizations in the country to support the successful delivery of this boxing event. Meanwhile, PNG Boxing Union President Dr. Gideon Kendino has appealed to the corporate and government agencies that have been approached to confirm their support of this event, which is expected to raise funds to finance the 2024 calendar of the sport. The competition will be staged at the Lamana Gold Club Arena. James Guken, Krukai Sports. 
Young female boxer Angeline Cariou is hopeful to secure a spot in the Olympic Games to be held in Paris this year. The 21-year-old from Milan Bay and Central Province said she will train hard in preparation for an international match to qualify for the Olympic Games later this year. I keep pushing myself to train hard and aim for gold for my upcoming games if there is one international fight. There's one fight coming, the Kent's, Kent's fight. So my coach just asked me to train and get ready, prepare myself for that game. Determined Kadiu said she is happy to represent Papua New Guinea and fight for gold. I just have to work hard, train hard, commit myself to training and just don't give up because uh, the silver taught me that this is the second I have to get the first gold, I have to achieve the gold. So I'm looking for that. Angeline Cardio took part in the 2023 Pacific Games in Solomon Islands, gaining silver medal under the female 52 kg category. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. <laughs> Motors presents Isuzu NPR cargo truck. Now available for only 140,000 kina. Built for tough terrains and heavy loads, the Isuzu NPR comes with a 4x2 2022 manual transmission, single cab, right-handed steering, and a maximum performance output of 89 kilowatts. Isuzu NPR cargo truck, PNG's number one truck. Visit Boroko Motors today for more information. From 3 kina to 75 kina to enjoy unlimited on net calls. More SMS, more data with increased off net minutes. Choose from 8 exclusive plans. Packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. The National Statistical Office is conducting a nationwide search to recruit data collectors to take part in the 2024 National Population Census in June. Applicants must have the following. Be between 18 and 45 years old, a minimum of grade 10, be physically fit and healthy, must not have a speech disorder, be good at public speaking and interacting with people, confident to use an Android phone or tablet, and have previous experience in data collection. If you want to be a data collector in the 2024 National Population Census, pick up an application form at the provincial headquarters or download it at www.nso.gov.pg. Fill the application form and submit with your updated CV to the Provincial Census Coordinator or the Provincial Recruitment Coordinator at your provincial headquarters. Applications close 19th April 2024. This message is endorsed by the Office of the National Statistician. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. 
Pan 10 kg roots with and grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top of the front of the rice. Now write the name Nana Maslong Yu Long the exciting long name. Drop him inside long entry box long store. Week 1 draw, 1 1 winner by Xin 500 kina. Week 2 draw, 1000 kina. Week 3 draw, 2000 kina. Now long week 4 draw, 5000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kiss in more talk seven. Tabs the conditions is tough. You're watching Trukai Sports. Moving to overseas sports, the NRL State of Origin is set to return to Victoria for the first time after six years. Organisers say they're aiming for a sellout at the MCG as the two coaches start to draw up their sides with fewer than 50 days to go until kickoff. Meanwhile, Sydney Roosters centre Joey Manu will leave the NRL at the season's end to take up a deal with Japanese rugby union club Toyota Verbilitz. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. Buy more, win more, one time roots rise. We have up money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big the roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name Nana Maslong Yu Long the exciting long name. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week 1 draw, 1 1 winner by Xin 500 kina. Week 2 draw, 1000 kina. Week 3 draw, 2000 kina. Now long week 4 draw, 5000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him more talk savvy. Tabs the conditions is tough. Be on board this revolution. Introducing our new range of devices and giveaway frenzy. Buy a device and get a free boombox and enjoy 7 days of free streaming to MGEMS. But that's not all. You will also receive 5 gigabytes every month for the next 6 months. That's a whooping 30 gigabytes of data. Don't miss this extraordinary opportunity. Head to your nearest telecom retail outlet to grab one today. Terms and conditions apply. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck. Like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too. Like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me. Which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance has come a long way on learning and learning from personal relevance to life relevance. It was here that the famous Bulabif Club was born, a key force behind the country's independence and a symbol of national unity. Today, SILAG is given a new mandate by the NEC policy decision number 61 of 2021, a mandate to provide systematic, stable and sustainable public sector training for the public service to systemize and structure a fit for purpose human capital and institutional development in the national public service. SILAG is now pleased to announce that it will be graduating 742 graduates, including 11 serving heads of departments on the 19th April 2024. So Mare Institute of Leadership and Governance is now preparing to be a special public service university to forge new generation of future ready leaders. It's almost time to crunch a month on Kai Time. If you're a warrior in your kitchen and want to be featured in the show, send us your video. The sky's the limit. It could be a family recipe. It could be a secret recipe. It could even be a simple recipe, just adding a few touches to make it special. Send us a video of your best recipe creation today and we'll feature it on Kai Time. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. 
The weather forecast for the next 24 hours for the southern region, Port Mosby City, partly cloudy with possible few showers, Pobondeta, some showers and thunderstorms. To the Mumasa region, Lay City, few showers, Varimo, some showers and possible thunderstorms. To the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengau, some rain showers and possible thunderstorms, Buka, partly cloudy with possible few showers. To the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, cloudy with rain showers and possible thunderstorms, Mendi, Tari and Wabeg, some rain showers and possible thunderstorms. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Wednesday, the 17th of April, 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets. It's Smile O'Clock. It's Smile O'Clock.